What next? Wheat? Or what about strawberries? The previous German Minister for Consumer Protection, Renata Kunas, is worried about the future. For her, the policies of the European Union are the weak point. The EU Commission allows itself to be pressured by GM companies. The Commission is letting itself be pressured by U.S. businesses on this issue, and it acquires sham scientific legitimacy by only questioning those in favour of genetic engineering. Basically, the entire process from the science to the licensing to sales and distribution in the area of genetic engineering is a scandal. As long as such doubts are not removed, the resistance to genetic engineering in Germany goes from opponents on the street right to the management of some businesses. Our impression is that nobody has the final proof that GM is harmless, nor that it is harmful either. We start doing some research in Argentina. There they've been cultivating genetically modified soy for around 10 years now. There they have the experience, and there they are more likely to know if there's anything to the concerns. We came across alarming news about GM crops, but it goes in another direction. It talks about increased use of herbicides. People were getting sick, super weeds were developing. The need for herbicides was meant to be reduced by the use of genetically modified crops. Wasn't that the goal and core message of the industry? But the news from Argentina reports the exact opposite. Does this eliminate the rather small advantage that was in this business idea? Instead of farmers being able to save on herbicides, they're becoming dependent on patented GM products and the herbicides tailored to them. And added to that, what about the uncertain risks to consumers? Of course, we want to talk to Monsanto, the manufacturer of GM soy, here too. The request is pending. We're on our way to Cerrito, the heart of GM soy cultivation. Bushes and trees are burning. Soy fields are being planted everywhere. The next morning, we meet a farmer who cultivates GM crops. He only wants to be filmed from behind. He doesn't want to be the black sheep of the community, only because he was willing to speak to us about the negative aspects of cultivating GM soy. But there are plenty of negative aspects to talk about. He shows us what the soil looks like where GM soy is cultivated. Grey and dead from the use of the special herbicides. They kill every plant except the soy. But now, some weeds are becoming resistant. Back on his farm, he shows us the soy. It is being stored under a tarpaulin. The farmers are dependent on Monsanto. The combination of patented GM products and herbicides has turned out to shackle the GM farmers. Nobody here is able to quit anymore. We want to know the story behind the increased use of herbicides. He tells us that the one to two litres they needed to spray initially to keep the weeds at bay had turned into ten litres. And to get rid of certain super weeds, they even had to spray chemicals that were prohibited. Okay. Many in Cerrito know the truth, but nobody talks about it. The people here prefer to profit from the boom. The money is rolling in, so the negative aspects are ignored. The local supplier of the GM seed is also doing excellent business. Tons and tons of fresh supplies are being delivered. To our surprise, we're allowed to interview the manager. Miriam Rauch is convinced by the combination of herbicide and GM soy. When it comes to the Roundup system, it can be said that it's a good system because the core of it is that farmers have to spray less pesticide. But isn't it this one-sided spraying that causes the development of these resistant superweeds? Yes, of course. If farmers always just use one pesticide, then resistant superweeds will develop. Then the normal dose won't be sufficient anymore. In that case, the dose needs to be increased. But let me tell you, the people have a real psychosis when it comes to spraying. 
It even goes so far that when someone is spraying, the people run to the police right away. As soon as they see spraying, they're sick. Only a psychosis? Or do the herbicides really make people sick? We have an appointment with local doctor Dario Gianfelici. He's constantly treating cases of poisoning in his practice. He introduces us to farmer Ruben Villagra, who lives with his family and his animals in the middle of his neighbor's soy fields. The family can't escape the herbicide fumes coming from his neighbors. His cows couldn't either, and now they're dead. The cows went into the GM soy fields and started eating. And you know what happened? They died. They died because they ate GM soy. I mean, imagine that. I can't keep animals anymore because they'll die if they go into those fields. But it isn't just the cows that died. The hares died too. And what was worse for Ruben Villagra, his family became sick. What happened last? We were all poisoned and couldn't breathe anymore. My whole family, and particularly my daughter, had to go to hospital. Had to vomit. Allergic reactions. Then I called the police, but even they ran away. They weren't even here for 10 minutes, and their lips went numb, and they weren't able to breathe properly anymore. Dr. Gianfelici explains the situation from his point of view and adds, Monsanto is acting with double standards. In the beginning, they came here and proclaimed GM soy to be the big solution. Then they started demanding patent fees for their products. The entire Monsanto issue is incredibly questionable. A little while later, our request for an interview with Monsanto Argentina is refused. Afterwards, we come across two studies that discuss a link between Monsanto's herbicide and a rare form of cancer in farm workers. Is anyone going to dig deeper into this issue? As long as important questions remain unanswered, people will continue to demonstrate, like here in Germany. Almost 60% of Germans don't want to consume GM food, according to the polls. The atmosphere is heated and scientists are at odds with each other. Why are animals dying in the feeding experiments? Are the authorities really working responsibly? Is genetic engineering safe? Anyone looking for a reliable answer will find the buck keeps getting passed to someone else. <laughs>